Let's see if Miata Van Bule agrees with his assessment of the realities of it. She's the chief executive of the New Economics Foundation. Good afternoon to you, Miata. Hi, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Yes, do you see similar pitfalls to this policy uh, as Robert? Well, it was really interesting listening to Robert because the arguments that he was basically laying down were exactly the same arguments, pretty much to the letter, that were deployed against minimum wage. You know, claims that it would be too much of a cost to the public purse, claims that it would bust businesses. And actually, you know, 20, 30 years on, what we've seen is that these claims were completely wrong because they failed to take into effect, into account. And, you know, the thing that Robert did say was that you can't, you don't know, you can't quite predict. But, you know, what we, what we saw with the minimum wage is that it didn't take into account increases in productivity, nor the wider impact on the economy, things like imp increases in tax receipts, which meant that actually it paid for itself over the long term. And so I think the arguments and what we've seen with the minimum wage can completely apply. But have we seen... Working time. I, I take your point about the tax receipts, but have we seen increases in productivity as a result of the minimum wage over, over time? Well, in certain, certain parts of the economy we have done, um, but we haven't seen it across the piece, which I think takes us to a kind of bigger question about... Uh, productivity. Now, look, what I'd say is that the big picture here and why I think it's important that actually political parties are talking about reductions in working time, this is a policy that, you know, our organisation has been talking about for the last sort of 10, 15 years, is, you know, this is happening against the backdrop of a decade of wage stagnation where people are working longer hours, many people working in precarious conditions, and, you know, something has to change. There's got to be a better deal for people who are working to make our economy tick, who are working to make our public services work, to care for us, to care for our children. But isn't the answer, because if you think about it, to my mind, the answer to that is good wages. Um, uh, but but let, let me finish the point. But good wages cost, obviously, you know, extra wages cost. But if somebody gets the same wages, has a day off, and the state has to employ a whole range of people for the day off that they have that they wouldn't ordinarily be employing because that person would have been doing a five-day week along with the army of employees in the public sector that would also have been doing a five-day week. That costs even more, it seems to me. So just give people better wages. Yeah, well, so I think it's two things. I think absolutely improved wages, and this is something that we are arguing for, has to happen. We've had, you know, 10 years where we've seen a wage freeze in the public sector, particularly, you know, today... The same, a doctor, a nurse, a teacher is paid, you know, 10% less than they were in 2010. So higher wages has to be part of the picture, but so does reductions in time. And it's worth sort of thinking about this in historical perspective, right? So what we've always seen is when the economy has grown, so if you think about the period since the war, when the economy grew, improvements in the economy were basically translated back to workers in the form of higher wages, yes, but also reductions in time. So we saw the working time basically reduced from about 48 hours uh, to 42 hours. And that trend basically stopped in the 1980s. And we would argue because of a whole load of kind of free market deregulation type policies and the kind of smashing of collective bargaining and trade unions, we basically saw a complete halt in reductions in working time. So we've got to change that. We've got to do something to shake that up again, which is why we probably need proactive of policy that says when we see improvements in the economy, workers have to benefit. Yes, in terms of wages, but actually in terms of working time. The number of hours we work at work is not something that's set in stone. It has changed over time and it can change over time. But we need something to change within the economy. Okay. So, you know, the policy, I can't speak for Labour, we haven't seen their manifesto. But, for example, the policy that we're talking about is, look, let's have something like the No Pay Commission, let's have a Working Time Commission that looks at the economy sector by sector. And when we see improvements and gains, it says, OK, well, actually, let's translate that into increased time in terms of statutory leave. Okay. And through that way, over a 10-year period, you get to a shorter working week.